day, everyone. Our next panel is setting up the infrastructure for the new economy, the rise of e-commerce in the Philippines. In order to make the Philippines globally competitive, we must answer the need to provide our budding fintech entrepreneurs an effective infrastructure and environment that they can lean on to push their business forward in the new economy. To further walk us through this insightful topic, we have our keynote speaker, Mr. Dick Chang, founder of Dragon Pay. Sir Chang, take it away. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone, or uh, good morning or good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, thank you for joining this session. So I, I will just start off with uh, a little little bit of a background there, uh, on the Philippine economy, on the Philippines uh, e-commerce infrastructure. Uh, next, please. Next slide, please. So uh, it has been 10 years since what I would consider uh, the, the initial mass adoption of e-commerce here in the Philippines. And, and for me, even though you know people could always have uh, you know could always purchase things like airline tickets, uh, but prior to the group buying sites coming into the country, these are the metro deal, the cash cash pinoy back in the days. Uh, it was not really until they came in that when people uh, were able to go online and buy you know little things anything from a massage deal to a, rest, a neighborhood restaurant deal. So for me, that was really the first uh, initial foray by which there was mass adoption of people going online and buying things online. So it has been a, a good 10 years, uh, although growth has not been as fast as it has uh, in other countries, I think we have gained a pretty good traction. Uh, according to the Bureau of Internal Revenue, uh, since September 2020, they recorded 7,262 pure online-based businesses only, uh, that has been uh, registered with them. Of course, this does, the, this does not include uh, existing businesses with offline capability, but are going online and doesn't include the big guys like the SM, the Robinsons, the Ayalas. These are the pure online-based businesses. And it also does not really take into account the, the underground economy, the, the, the Instagram sellers and so on. So it, it's definitely a really, really large market uh, that is happening here. Um, and we are very excited to be part of it. Uh, based on a study by Hootsuite, 76% of adult internet users has purchased something online within the last month. And uh, of those who purchased, 66% of them actually use a mobile device to do the purchase. And this is actually the third highest uh, among the different countries uh, globally. Uh, we are only third against, uh, I believe, Indonesia and Thailand when it comes to making purchases using a mobile device. Uh, but ho however, uh, using the same uh, study, the Philippines is actually at the lowest uh, rung when it comes to the monthly ARPU. So we're only doing roughly about 1,000 pesos, 1,200 pesos uh, in online purchases per, per person uh, per month. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, our topic this afternoon is about the e-commerce infrastructure. And, and I listed down for what is for me four key uh, components of this infrastructure. Of course, there's always the internet connectivity. Uh, there is logistics, uh, the marketing platforms, and payments. So minus any of these, you cannot really do a full uh, e-commerce service unless, unless, of course, maybe if you're selling digital goods or if you're selling services, then there might be uh, no logistics component. But generally speaking, uh, any physical item would have to have a component of the item being shipped somewhere. So next slide, please. So I'll, I'll just go through each of the infrastructure uh, quickly. So in terms of uh, the, the internet infrastructure in the country, we uh, are now at 159% uh, mobile penetration. So definitely more phones than there are people. Uh, and 86% of these mobile connections can be considered already as broadband. Uh, by definition of the GSMA, uh, we're in broadband is anything 3G and up. So in theory, any about 86% of people with mobile phone can somehow, uh, quote unquote, uh, use a mobile broadband connection. And we have seen also in recent uh, months, especially with the pandemic and all, uh, the government has been pushing for uh, uh, a lot of access, uh, public places as well. And uh, there has been testing already by the big telcos on 5G. So we're, we're going to start seeing uh, more affordable handsets in uh, the months to come as 5G becomes normal. And in terms of wired connection, uh, definitely, there has been a lot of uh, 
uh, activity going on uh, in terms of wiring uh, fiber specifically. Nowadays, one almost never hear any more of copper-based DSL connection. Everybody's going fiber. The telcos are doing very well, uh, judging by their uh, revenue growth. Um, and I guess this is also partly fueled also by you know, household uh, investing in fiber because the kids have to stay at home and to do schooling online. So uh, overall, wired connection and wireless connection has been growing in the country, even though we are still considered a laggard uh, in terms of uh, speed uh, as well as cost. So next slide, please. Uh, for logistics, there is still not really a lot of what I would consider as full service delivery companies. There are, of course, the traditional, like the likes of the LBC and the, the newer players like Ninjavan, wherein they would do really end-to-end -end national uh, type of deliveries. But, uh, and these are still largely based on the more traditional hub-and-spoke model, wherein uh, somebody will pick up the item, it goes to a central delivery sorting area, and then it will get forwarded to uh, another location. Uh, but what we have seen, especially during the, uh, the quarantine period, this pandemic, there is the rise of the gig economy, wherein you can book uh, for somebody to pick an item up and deliver it point to point. Uh, and it doesn't really go uh, through the, the traditional delivery companies. So we have seen the rise of Grab, uh, Lala Move, and on a more specific vertical, you have Food Panda, who's specifically delivering food. Uh, so this has been a, a great change. Uh, although most of the deliveries are still happening in Metro Manila, uh, at least in terms of the gig economy, uh, it has also grown quite a bit in recent months and uh, in, in a couple of years in the province. Uh, my understanding is uh, today, easily about 60 to 70% of deliveries already happening outside of Metro Manila. But I, but I believe the source of the products are, are still primarily Metro Manila because that is where the, the big uh, e-commerce players are operating. So the items are coming from Manila, but they are now being delivered uh, in, in all sorts of places. Of course, given the limited uh, infrastructure in the Philippines, the fact that we are an archipelago, logistics is always going to be a, a, a very complicated uh, game to play. And uh, we're happy to see that a lot of players have been investing on putting up regional hubs uh, in taking this uh, forward. Next slide, please. Of course, uh, simply having internet connection and logistics uh, is not enough for the market to know that the products you're selling uh, you know, is available. So in the Philippines, in the case of the Philippines, the most popular social media platform still remain to be Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and more recently, especially during the pandemic, there's TikTok. Uh, we, uh, as we all know, the Philippines still remain as the number one in terms of the most time spent uh, online among all the, the countries surveyed. And uh, we, and in terms of a person-to-person -person type of informal sellers, uh, Instagram is very popular. Viber has a, is, is one of those uh, messaging platform which for some reason, you know, gained uh, a stronghold in the Philippines, although it's not really that popular regionally. But uh, there are a lot of Viber communities wherein one can buy and sell items. And at least speaking for myself personally, uh, during the pandemic here in our uh, community, there have been a lot of Viber, Viber sellers uh, sell basic things like, you know, food, uh, toilet paper, and so on. And, you know, people just uh, buy and sell online through Viber, uh, amazingly. Of course, there are always the big marketplaces, the Shopee, Lazada, Zalora, Zilingo, uh, you know, the world, wherein uh, they, they, they bring in all the marketing effort, they, they handle the, the selling, the, the, the advertising, and people just go in there, open online stores, and they can start selling. And uh, there is a third category, the, the e-distributor. Uh, e uh, of course, Steve is here with us uh, to talk more about great deals. But basically what e-distributor do is they are sort of the in-between guys. Uh, they, they help uh, physical retailers or people with physical goods who may not have the savviness, the tech savviness to sell uh, in, in a digital format. So they handle the, the in-between. So there are also people like Cloud Logic who are who deal more with uh, uh, B2C. So you have a brand, you're not comfortable with selling it online, you outsource it to, through them and then they handle the actual re online retailing. So next slide, please. And of course, there's the, the payment infrastructure. So uh, from what we have seen, although we have been talking about these same numbers for years, uh, we haven't really seen a, a drastic increase uh, in the past couple of years. So credit card penetration is still roughly about 5% in the country. 
banking penetration is still roughly somewhere around 30%. Um, but there has been uh, admittedly a lot of, uh, uh, of developments when it comes to financial inclusion. But this has generally been more geared towards the newer fintech products, you know, the e-wallets, the mobile wallets. So we are seeing uh, a lot of take up uh, or adoption more from the informal sectors uh, because still, when you go through the banking industry, it's still the traditional uh, process of going to a bank, opening, you know, using valid IDs and so on. And and even though th there are more people simply because the population is growing, in terms of penetration rate, it still remains roughly the same to this day. So uh, according to the survey, about 37% of adult users say that they have used some form of online financial services. So this could be either online banking or the mobile app of their bank. Uh, so still very limited. Uh, the national retail payment system through PesoNet and, and Instapay has received very wide adoption among users, uh, especially during this pandemic. So uh, since since uh, everybody was afraid, you know, to, to be holding physical cash because of all the possible germs that uh, you know might get transmitted, everybody was sort of forced to uh, use some form of uh, online transfer. And because the banks all uh, uh, removed their fees for PesoNet and Instapay during, at least during the quarantine period, it had allowed uh, a lot of people to try it out for the first time. Uh, and a lot of people have gotten used to it. And so even though they have reimposed the fees since then, uh, we still see quite a bit of people uh, using Instapay and PesoNet because of the convenience that this has given. We have also seen uh, retail payments uh, using QR code. So you can go to your neighborhood supermarket, uh, drugstore, and almost everywhere you will see a QR code of Gcash or PayMaya sitting there. Uh, the more recent players, uh, like Grab, is becoming uh, common in, in SM stores, of course, because of their partnership. And uh, if you go to a certain, uh, many establishments, they also carry the Alipay, WeChat Pay uh, logos, uh, I guess specifically more for the, the mainland Chinese who are based here in the Philippines. And all of this is, uh, is going to be quite interesting as the government has also uh, issued uh, uh, the possibility that we are going into a standardized QR code format like what they have done in countries like Singapore. Because the, you know, the last thing that we would want is to have you know, like 10 different QR codes uh, at the checkout counter. So next slide, please. So just to share some data that we have from Dragon Pay. So Dragon Pay focuses on alternative payments. So these are non-credit card payments. Uh, what we have seen from uh, pre-quarantine, uh, so that was like February, January, the volume, if you look at the, our volume from for January, February, and compare it to what it is now, uh, we have seen almost a, a fourfold increase in terms of number of payments. Uh, so you, you can really see that uh, a lot of people have been buying things online. But of course, the, the question there is always, was it organic growth or was it uh, an artificial growth uh, primarily pushed because of the quarantine, because people couldn't go out. So were they forced to buy things online? So I, I think that is something uh, that is really difficult to answer at this point uh, and remains uh, interesting to be seen in the coming months as we start going out of, uh, of this general quarantine uh, to see if people will still keep on uh, buying things online now that they have gotten used to it. So uh, electronic channels have grown the fastest during this period. Uh, to give you a picture, prior to uh, quarantine, I would say about 70%, 70, 75% of Dragon Pay transactions were cash payments. Uh, and you know the 25 or so were the electronic online banking or e-wallets. Uh, but today, uh, it has completely flipped around. So we're now seeing only about maybe 30% uh, cash payment. And the 70% is going through uh, mobile wallets, e-wallets, online banking. So it has really been a very significant change. Uh, it doesn't mean, though, that the cash is going down. It just means that those paying using electronic means has increased significantly, so they outpaced it. But there will, for me, there will always be a, a cash market here in the Philippines, and that that one has we haven't really seen it going down in terms of uh, number of transactions. So uh, B still remains to be king uh, here in the Philippines, especially if you take a look at, at the numbers of uh, Shopee and Lazada. Uh, but uh, even these guys have already been uh, encouraging their customers to move over to their Shopee Pay wallet or their Lazada wallet. 
uh, they also see, of course, the, the disadvantages of COD and would want to wean their customers uh, away and move them towards an electronic wallet. So next slide, please. So that brings us to uh, our session this afternoon, which is where do we go from here? So uh, as they say, uh, the pandemic has pretty much compressed uh, six years of uh, what it would have normally taken e-commerce to grow organically uh, and squeeze it down to six months. So, uh, uh, you know, I've been attending the other speakers uh, for DSWFF, and uh, the question that is commonly asked is, will people go back to the way they did things when the pandemic is over? And uh, studies have shown uh, uh, that uh, maybe 80 to 90 percent of them uh, have already gotten used or have gotten comfortable with doing uh, interbank transfers, buying their groceries online. But even though there will be always some people who would go back to the old way of doing things, uh, by and large, the large majority would most likely retain some form of habit uh, that they have gained during this period. So the challenge is out there for the government to put policies in place to ensure that uh, all of these infrastructure will be sustained and that uh, the businesses that were affected, they just have to find uh, new ways to cope with the new normal. And, uh, and there has been a lot of uh, entrepreneurs who have taken advantage of the situation, I guess, and, and uh, have developed all of these really creative uh, solutions by which uh, uh, they can continue to grow and address uh, a market that is very unique. And this hopefully is here to stay. So thank you. Uh, so this is really more of just a backgrounder and I'm passing it on to our moderator, JJ, uh, so that she can share the, the thoughts of the panelists. Thank you so much, Mr. Chang. At this point, we'd like to introduce our panel for this afternoon. First, we have Mr. Victor Paterno, CEO of 7-Eleven and Click. Hi. We have Mr. Steve C, CEO of Great Deals. Joining them will be Mr. Dick Chang of Dragon Pay. And moderating the panel discussion will be Ms. JJ Virai, founding director of the Philippine Association for Digital Commerce and Decentralized Industries. Ms. JJ. Thank you. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and good afternoon to all our participants. That was so good, Dick. You know, I have just so much questions to ask. But before that, may I ask the other two panelists if you can say something about yourself? Maybe start with the younger one or the more guapo one. <laughs> Oh, who comes first? Uh, uh, Steve, she's falling on you. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. Then you can, you know, then you can go with Victor and the inside from, you know, from his side. Um, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Steve. So definitely the younger one, ako. <laughs> you know, and let's like to say hi to all the viewers. Uh, it's gonna be an exciting. Uh, <coughs> Um, time for this afternoon as we share the writing of the e-commerce industry. Definitely for me uh, as a CEO and founder of Great Deals, we're an e-commerce e solution provider for brands and retailers like Unilever, Nestle, Abbott, San Miguel, Reebok, Fila, uh, Crocs, Ipanema, and a lot, lot more. And one thing that we have seen is we are still in the sunrise industry of this new economy and uh, greater things and much more exciting things are about to come in the near future. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe go to, not that I'm saying it's less guapo, <laughs> young. you are the youngest speaker, please. Yeah, this is hard. Yeah. Your, your company and yourself. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm uh, Victor Paterno. I'm the CEO of uh, 7-Eleven Philippines, uh, Philippine 7 Corporation. We have 3,000 um, and, and uh, over the last few years, we've played a big role uh, uh, in, in payments. So, so Dick uh, and Grant Pay have been one of our partners. Um, and we have seen continued, uh, uh, continued rise in uh, over-the-counter payments. So uh, cash to uh, electronic. Uh, basically, at our stores. Uh, we do think uh, we have another role to play, um, which is uh, logistics. Um, so in uh, Taiwan, for example, 50% of e-commerce packages are picked up at uh, convenience stores. Uh, 
uh, solves the last mile problem a bit. Uh, so the, 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 those are our interests. On top of that, we have a uh, with the Click app, uh, which has nine million downloads, um, you know, which which we used to intermediate between the two. Uh, it's a primarily a loyalty app, but it's been expanded to wallet and uh, online shopping. Okay. Um, maybe can I can I just ask you before I ask other people? But Victor, you've always been the most respectable guys so you're, you you have always been invited in you know, big events asking for your contacts maybe you can share something about that how do you see this new economy is it, do you agree that it's the new economy or the new way of but is this something that will be permanent you see some form of fatigue in terms of you know impossible online there is a fatigue to that and you've seen some businesses initially they were buying selling a lot of this ube pandesan then after a month or two they stopped right and when you ask them it's because people don't buy anymore so how do you see things with them in this space of i think that uh you know that's that's a really tough question but i think the you know the what how 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 much habits will stay uh, depends on how long this thing will last. Um, until recently, we didn't have much visibility into that. Um, but I think now we, you know, our, our working assumption is kind of like, okay, uh, early 22 uh, is when things will kind of normalize. Uh, the other question is, what shape will the economy be by then? So how habits will have been formed and then what uh, shape the economy will be. Uh, so the, uh, the, the attitude we take is that uh, try to be part of those new habits uh, that are being formed because some of them will stick. Uh, and besides, being part of those new habits will contribute to being profitable. We are not, by the way, now, uh, throughout this uh, pandemic. So, yeah. That's why you know, we continue to focus on payments. Uh, we're doing online uh, grocery where you pick up uh, the, the, the item is picked at our warehouse, but picked up at the store. Uh, that's that's a recent thing we're going to scale that. Yeah, I've noticed when I go to your store, you have more selection. And I was so surprised. You have everything like, are you going to a full grocery? We're, we're changing. Yeah, so we're doing two pivots. One is the online grocery, which, oh. which is from the warehouse, so six thousand items, uh, and then you can pick it up supermarket prices, um, or you can pay for like a food pan that to deliver to you. Uh, the second yeah. bit is, is yes, we are in the middle of uh, fact, you know, changing our assortment, dropping our prices for essentials. Uh, so it's 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 a huge logistical undertaking and a big big price risk. But about a third of our uh, uh, items will be one third to one half will be different in every state. More essentials. Um, is it, is it um, okay to say that twenty twenty revenue has gone down? for your your business? We, we lost five hundred million in the second quarter. How many? 500 million in the second quarter. Oh my gosh, it's a lot. Even despite the fact that they're going online, it's not good. Well, no, the online thing is recent. It takes a while. Okay. Yeah. I hope that you recover by you know, going online. Um, may I ask um, just to, to, to connect that one? Um, we've seen a lot of this so earlier in the report that it is good to say. People will still do online events and say the lockdown is over, the pandemic is over. I agree with Victor when he said this is going to reach 2022. I think, you know, even with the vaccine, not everybody will jump into the vaccine. Uh, it took 15 years for the tuberculosis to have a vaccine. Some people will be right to jump into it. So, this, with you, with your forecast, um, if, if, if this is interesting, there would be more businesses trying to go online that they would want to avail of a, a facility such as it is like, and this is what I'm always faced with when small businesses want who would get into or venture into an online business. They always say, we'll just do cash because to get 
uh, a payment facility in Mexico City. Do you have a package for SMEs? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we do have several uh, options for people who want to go online. So we, we have different services for everything from enterprise to SMEs to even individual sellers in Instagram. For for those who want to you know just try it online without with very very low uh, uh, entry you know cost cost of entry, we do have a light package that they can avail, and it comes with the the, the common uh, payment options like GCash, uh, BDO payments, and so on. Uh, and they, they can you know they can go up and running quite uh, easily. They can get themselves onboarded. They just have to go through uh, our online website, so www.dragonpay.ph, uh, and we, the product's called Dragon Pay Lite. Uh, so everything the, the onboarding is actually uh, DIY. So they just upload their business registration and so on, and uh, it can get activated in a couple of days. And uh, depending on what platform they use, they, it could be a Shopify website. Uh, we are already pre-integrated with Shopify. Or uh, it could be something even uh, more basic. Uh, we're in, you can just send a payment link either through email or SMS. Uh, and they can conduct their actual buying and selling through Viber, uh, uh, you know, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, and whatever platform they want. And they can just send a payment uh, link uh, via SMS or, or uh, via email. And for uh, individual sellers, we also have a service called SureTayo, which is more of a personal escrow service. So if you don't trust the, the Instagram seller that, you know, he, he, that he is really who he claims he is, you can use the platform uh, to, to act as like a middleman to hold on to your money. And we will only release basically once you have confirmed receipt of the item. So yeah, there are several options for people to try. And uh, We'd be more than happy to talk to, to them. So with that, have you increased your manpower? Because I expect that there would be more dispute management uh, issues, right? Uh, uh, onboarding of well, companies. What we have seen, uh, although there is that free option, the Dragon Free Light, a lot of people who try to go uh, through the process, we find out that they are not really registered businesses. A lot of them, you know, don't even have a basic BTI sole proprietorship uh, uh, license. So for us, we want to ensure the, the, the buying public, at least that they're buying from a legitimate business. Of course, there's no assurance that it's not a scam, but at the very least, at least we can say that uh, you know, they went through the BIR, the DTI, and they got their papers, and they got the mayor's permit. So more or less, at least that will weed out uh, the really bad scammers. Um, but surprisingly, a, a lot of people really don't want to go through that. And always, the, the, you know, the most common excuse that they will have is, but we're only selling online. So they seem to have this notion that if you're only an online seller, no, you don't oh, need business me. registration. So you don't need to pay taxes. Yeah. So, so a lot of people just, you know, we, it, they fell, uh, they, you know, they would fall off uh, and they cannot really push through because it's a basic requirement that we have. Yeah, okay. I mean, at least those are safety measures, right? Yep. Now, can we move on with Steve? Now, before I give a general question for everybody to answer, Steve, you're a unique, you know, you're, it's a new, I, like what I said earlier, during the, the pre-session, is that I've always thought that you were a group buying site, right? Yours is a unique business model when you started in 2014. You saw the gap in the entire business, right? Maybe you'd like to share that, especially for, for those who start in the business online. But being an operator, I call you as an operator, you know, the one in, in, okay. in between. Uh, you make things happen, right? Uh, I find the greatest salesperson because you're able to sell laundry soaps online, <laughs> package it with a freebie. It's amazing. So, uh, yeah. How did you do that? So, let me share a story. So, when we were getting the account of Rec and Thank you, sir, yung uh, seller of Jurex and Lysol, and I told them, I can sell your products online. Number one, so sabi na, who will buy condom or even Lysol online? Sabi ko, number one, the, cult the culture of the Filipino, pag sa, especially sa 7-Eleven, nahihiya eh. <laughs> online. Pero there's more women 
by uh, ano, uh, Jurex Online the men because it's very oh, really? so yan yung data namin and then number two Jurex uh, Jurex is the am I am I right tama ba ko is Jurex the condom no yes 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 uh, <laughs> And then uh, one thing, another thing was Lysol. Nobody thought who would buy Lysol online. That was uh, around 2016. And in just a few months, we were able to increase their business 500%. No, by just uh, bundling, showing the, the actual products and made it available talaga. No? So there's a lot of, you know, everything you can buy now online. Yan ang katotohanan right now. Before nobody buys, you know, nobody sells shoes. In Lazada, we were the first major uh, supplier of rubber shoes, sneakers. So your first 10 pages, when people search for sneakers, rubber shoes, puro product namin yung time na yun. So ganun talaga yung how, it, how algorithm works because sometimes you have to try before people will say, oh, pwede palang bumili. If it's made available, people can really buy. And I was just like to add lang doon sa nasabi ni Sir Victor that, you know, di ba, it takes 21 days to create a habit. Yes, and you have. And it's already eight months since lockdown. It's already a lifestyle for us to buy online. People learn to buy food online. You know, everything's, uh, you know, growth in Lazada and Shopee has really grown tremendously in the past few months. And I think, yes, definitely uh, we will have a new normal. Babalik ang ano. But then the, the base that we have for online shoppers have tremendously grown. No. And it will continue to grow, no? Maybe not as, you know, accelerated as we want to be during the pandemic. But uh, yun nga, nakwento nga ni Sir Dick kanina, no? Uh, when we were looking at the April, May, June, people were, every, everyone was online trying to buy something online. But the problem is our infrastructure was not ready. It takes a month for something to be delivered during those times. So people were frustrated. No, we were not able to really capitalize because our capacity capabilities in the logistics side was hindered. Even on the payment side, there's a lot of hindrance. Uh, most of the, hindi uh, naman ng Dragon Pay, no? but some of our, no, even had problems, you know, because of the search, uh, yung surcharge ng mga sobrang daming people uh, trying to buy online. So even their system were, you know, so mabog ba hindi naka hindi kinayanan ng capacity no so it took us a few months before we, we we were all of us able to adapt to the new normal to the new operations and we have continue, seen continuous growth month on month uh, for the last few months here uh, this year 2020 so i would really say e-commerce is a silver lining no during this 2020 uh, there's really growth in the e-commerce space okay Given that, you seems like you're so positive on, on, on this entire industry, um, but a lot of the small businesses have actually been frustrated. They start to pay what from, you know, from being employed, being an entrepreneur, and they have to stop it because people just stop buying. Um, what would be your advice, especially with you? I, mean, oh, I, I, look, I look at the pandemic as a great ano, equalizer. As just like the internet, just like the internet. It's a yeah, great, a great yeah. equalizer because, you know, you need to be adaptive, innovative. And, you know, sabi ko nga, it's not about uh, companies being adaptive. It's it's about companies needs to survive. That's why they're going digital. Okay. So before, it's very hard. Ngayon, nung time nung pandemic, we, there's, we don't need a sales team anymore. People were keep, you know, there's too much. Uh, companies wanting to go online that we cannot able that our capabilities are not able to to uh, accept kumbaga, no so that's why we have to grow tama lang rin so that hindi rin sasabog yung sistema rin namin but one thing for sure those who doesn't adapt to the new normal will not survive in the new in the new economy and i and i was sharing ang ganda nga ng sharing ni sir dick about the triangle of the digital economy which is e-commerce uh, payments, fintech, and logistics. One cannot grow without each other. It needs to be a triangle, sabay sabay ang growth, so that the e-commerce, the digital economy will continue to grow. 
But they said marketing is an, a, an important component of that entire system. Yeah, it's yes, it's it's part of the building blocks for people to you know. Uh, I would like really thank, I would really like to thank Lazada and Shopee or their mother company Alibaba and Tencent. Without them educating the Filipino people about online shopping, ilan sa atin nago online shopping. Without their uh, investment infrastructure that they built here in the Philippines, it's going to be very hard for the Filipino. That's why right now we're one of the you know growing sector because. Companies invested in the Philippines. No, sad to say, yung government natin hindi pa. But you know, we have a lot of private sectors that invested in our ecosystem for us to continue to grow. Okay, Vic, do you have anything to say to that, Victor? Uh, nothing really. To add. I yeah. I agree. Those 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 three legs are important. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you are like earlier you said that you are going to logistics, right? Maybe because we have a captured market. But isn't that space you type already at this point? There's just a lot of them coming up. You have you know the ding dong, you have the joyride. I don't know. Uh, we're not we're not going to compete with them. Uh, uh, it's just stores just pick up points. So I, I I don't know if. Uh, most people think all e-commerce is delivered direct to the door. Uh, no, uh, if you ask Alibaba and uh, Tencent, uh, JD, they'll tell you that 80% of e-commerce in China is picked up. Uh, oh. Yeah. You know, it, it works in Shanghai and, and those places, but, but uh, when you start getting less dense, uh, it becomes quite expensive. So they, they operate a lot of pickup stations. Uh, I think it's a hundred thousand each or something like that. Uh, so we just want to be a pickup station, B basically because our trucks go to the store every day anyway. So there are a lot of economics, unit economics, and that's why uh, online grocery makes sense for us because uh, online grocery is the most logistically challenging uh, yeah. uh, e-commerce product because it's bulky, uh, yeah. and it's cheap. so it's expensive to ship. Uh, so it's 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 the most logistically challenged. And since we also have a warehouse, we have unit pick, we have relationships with the suppliers. It makes sense to start there. Yeah, like me, I have three Seven Eleven around my area. So I imagine I just go down to my area, I'll pick it up from you know from whichever Seven Eleven I want. The back yeah. of my house, the side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. I I would highlight there's a, there's a really interest. The, the most, most uh, logistically challenged uh, uh, subsector of that groceries is produce. So there's actually an effort by oh, yeah. and Lasal, and we're, we're, we're helping. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to use their campuses as bagsakans because there's no, there's nobody in the, in the sort, sorting centers for produce uh, from the, uh, you know, direct from the farm, from farm co-ops. Uh, and then they hope to you know, use them as sorting, kind of sell them online. Uh, I, I don't think they've quite got other plans yet, but there is that intent to do it. Uh, and I said, you know, we can help with the logistics. What I need you to do is you need to convince people to buy produce online because that is very, very, very hard. Ask Amazon or Ocado, and so they'll tell you how hard it is. Oh, yeah. uh, but you can do it because basically the unit economics are such that if you buy a kilo uh, from, from this online thing, you can uh, give a kilo to somebody hungry because it, that's the way that the farm to an uh, price is like 3x, farm to consumer price is like 3x. So now you remove the middlemen, the seven middlemen, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is this is uh, Pin Wardwo's new thrust, actually. Uh, they're starting to do farms. No? Uh, direct to farm. They're the leading platform in China for that. The group buy side, people will go. So, so from farm to day one. Yeah, can I share something? So we yes. have a, we have a startup here in the Philippines called Zagana. Have you heard of it? Zagana is a farm to kitchen platform that yeah. delivers fresh produce, fruits, vegetables, meat, and seafood anywhere in Metro Manila in sixty minutes. Sixty yeah. minutes. Is one yes. Of they're, they, they're available on Zagana.com. They're available in Grab Mart. They're available in Food oh, Panda. No? Yeah. 
So they're op they're opening in Cavite, in Cavite and they're opening in Cebu. No. So uh, I think they we, well it started lang during this pandemic. This year lang sila nag-open and have seen tremendous growth, no? Uh, yeah. for for that ano. Have you heard of it, Victor? Uh, I think there are several. I, yeah, I think I've heard yeah. of that one. I think the problem with those is they'll always be niche. Uh, we were buying to be cooperative with the supermarket to be break even. You have to buy two thousand pesos. So no, if you're a household of ten people, that's enough. Because three hundred uh, pesos yung fee. Eh. Yeah. Uh, yung, yung no? You can check now. Uh, I think zagana kahit sang kilo lang bilhin mo pwede na. Uh, uh, yeah, kahit one kilo lang um order then. You just uh, tapos kung nagbigay pa ng free delivery si Grab, di wala nang bayad, no? So it's like Grab foods, yeah, pero it's vegetables and fresh fruits and meat and then Wow. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you respond to farmers who like to sell online? They're not registered. They're not organized. They cannot do it. Uh, well, they can always uh, go through their cooperatives. Uh, yeah. And uh, well, even the organized farms, actually, we haven't seen a lot of uh, activities directly with them, I guess. But Sanay uh, is going through the middleman. Uh, and hopefully with initiatives like the one uh, that Victor was talking about, it would give them more opportunity to go direct. Uh, um, my in-laws are also from, in the, you know, from the agri uh, business. And if you're doing agri in the province, there's a lot of risk that you have to go through to bring your food to the market. Mm -hmm. like, you know, the hogs, uh, a lot of things can happen along the way. Mama matay yung hogs, you get into you know, accidents or whatever. So by going through middlemen, even though they get a lower cut, they don't have to worry about a lot of things. Uh, so uh, I guess we have to get them out of that uh, old way of thinking then and getting them more used to going direct. And I'm sure there's going to be very different challenges. I'm curious actually to what Steve was saying, because from the way it sounded, Zagana doesn't operate their own uh, logistics team. So I assume that they expect people to also book through Grab, Lala Move, and so no. on. So it's already, you know, yeah, it's already, sorry, uh, for, you know, for, trans for, for, trans for transparency, I'm a co-founder of the company. <laughs> 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 We've been doing this, and it's ano. Uh, we've uh, ilang met uh, ilang millions of metric tons already. We have uh, partnered with few hundreds of farmers cooperative and farmers already uh, during this time. No, uh, I think we we're gonna close this year with 100 million in sales only for fresh for all those four main ano. Uh, quite growth for a startup nga, no? and we've seen the challenges on how you. Nga, sabi ko, it's a really different field when you're when you're in the digital space you need to be to have the digital savviness and also the supply chain uh, issues of especially fresh fruit uh, fresh fruits and vegetables that are ano uh, mabilis yung wastage mo kailangan makontrol mo rin yun eh no? but we uh, yun yung ano yun yung isang kagandahan noon no uh, all of our no is we also have kasi a omni channel business solution for SMEs that we just launched, the, we haven't launched yet, it's a pilot project. Pa siya. What we do, it's, it's called Zappi. What we do is you turn your social media pages into online shops, integrated na siya with a payment gateway provider and a logistic provider. So seamless na for the customer. Para meron kang Lazada inside your Facebook page, Messenger, uh, Instagram. Ano siya, parang meron ka, your own Facebook page can become a web store ko no. But it's inside, everything is inside the messenger. Parang ganyan. So, yun yung isa sa mga ginagawa. So, it's ano rin siya. So, once the customer order, they can buy through credit card, Gcash, GrabPay, or COD. And then deliver it into their doorsteps. No? So, yun yung ano, kung nasaan yung social, saan yung address mo, it can deliver up to 20 kilometers. No. So yun yung isa sa mga ginawa namin. Baka si 7-Eleven gusto yun. Pwede na tayo mag-partner. <laughs> <laughs> we can do pick up points for your ano. Yeah. Points for your vegetables para mapawasan yung burn rate mo. Laki ng burn rate. Mayroon kung 1 kilo libre. <laughs> oh, nga. So, so ano, uh, yun, those are the things that we've been doing in the e-commerce space. 
and we're really ano, excited sharing all of these things to our Filipino peoples to be able to bounce back for the year 2021 then. Oh, that's good. It's really good. Um, congratulations on your new business, Steve. And it's all about it. It's all about it. Other than this, no? I'm sure you have more in your, in your sleeves. But um, in terms of the, 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 the payment, no? I can just want to ask, are you familiar with Leica Gems and the Kumo Gifts converted into cash? There's a growing movement of that. When you're in Leica, you earn gems. So, one of the future trends talaga is live streaming, live streaming yeah. services. Just like Umu and other platforms, may mga live stream. Even sa Lazada, Shopee, they have live stream selling. Selling. So, those are major trends talaga. Even in Facebook, you go to Facebook, you see people selling in Facebook Live. Mine sees, yes, sold sa'yo na. Ganyan yung mga ginagawa nila. No? So all of these things are really going to the future. As our internet infrastructure becomes better, hindi, nagiging, hindi na po putol-putol yung internet natin, live streaming will become better and better. No? So I think uh, bo- most of the platforms, Kumu, Lazada, Shopee, has live streaming uh, platforms already so that people can sell live. There's more engagement. It's part of marketing, as you say, JJ. Yeah. That's why... Yun yung importante doon to have those live streaming activities so that people can become more engaged and people buy buys more when they're engaged more. Yeah. yeah, and people earn. They earn when they watch. Yes. Huh? So how's that? Date for your business. Are you threatened by this type of payment you know, innovation? Because like in Laika, you earn gems. And now when you go to, a, there are several stores and uh, they accept Laika gems. Cash. Well, well, for us, we, yeah. Yeah, we, we don't, uh, our, our philosophy has always been to uh, to work with different forms of payment. Eh? Uh, for us, naman, the, the ultimate decision maker is always the buyer. So if there is a big glamour for a particular online currency, whether it be yeah. mga gems or whether it's real e-money, uh, then we will find our way to incorporate it and 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 work with them. Wonderful. So uh, yeah, we 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 are more cooperative uh, in that sense. And I see this also with Click, diba? You're the first adopters of Bitcoin. If I remember the kids in New York, they all go to 7-Eleven to buy Bitcoins. That's Coins PH. That's Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> They go to yes, we take payments for coins. Yes. Yeah, so. they get it from coins. But it's but see, people don't remember coins. They remember 7 Eleven. Yes, when they ask them, the where are you going? Yes. Yes. I'm going to 7 Eleven to buy bitcoins. Yes. Yes. People say coins. They say 7 Eleven. It's easier yes. to say. Right? But they step something like you have a lot, you have a, your loyalty program. Are you intending to convert that into an e e currency? Uh, we, we already are. You can you can use those uh, points to redeem uh, things. Uh, you know, uh, at some points in the past, we've allowed them to be converted to cash in the e-wallet to buy anything you want at the store. Uh, so yes, um, you know the 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 I think the loyalty program for 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 I think for all retailers in general. Um, at least in the past, uh, if you had a storefront, you had a big advantage in acquisition because you already had customers. Yeah. So you just had to uh, make those customers not just physical customers but digital as well. And that's where loyalty points are important. They have to have a reason to identify themselves every transaction. You have to give them points. Um, and then once you have that connection uh, with them, then you can sell them other things uh, virtually. That's kind of the way we look at it. Yeah, you have a big base you can imagine. Actually, you guys were in the last, uh, we're in the closing of the session. Maybe you'd want to say something to our audience um, and how they can, you can encourage them to, you know, to embrace the new normal and even put up their own businesses. Our unemployment uh, rate has gone up. I think it's a significant growth of 7.5%. It's, it's really bad. And a lot of people are thinking of how to pivot themselves from being unemployed to uh, being an entrepreneur and 
since they're always online, they're in social media, they don't even watch television anymore. And they want to do something online. How do we encourage them to do so? Or do we discourage them? Right? Maybe we hear from all of you. Maybe I'll end with Victor because it's, you know, he has more to say. Maybe not because he's more he's older than all of us. <laughs> <Not Sure. either. laughs> No, but because you know you are we every uh, you're such a, you're such a respected man in the industry, and we learn from you. Maybe we'll start with with Steve, then let's go by Dick, then Dick. Yeah, Dick. yeah, that, that sounds good because that that is according to our age, I think. I'm gonna buy. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I think one thing that I really like to share is going back to would I encourage people to go in the e-commerce or digital economy? Definitely yes, because as I have said, we're just starting. It's a sunrise industry. What it means that you, if you're an employee, you study e-commerce, you're gonna be employable for the next 20 years when you learn it, because that's the new industry. You know? So there's a lot of new hope because we're going into this new digital economy. You know? And there's not just only about e-commerce, it can, it, can, it can become FinTech, it becomes logistics. All of us can be part of this value chain of this new digital economy. You know? So number two is you continue to be more resilient and innovative. You know, there are things that we need to continue to, uh, let's say, uh, try out in life. You know? uh, even though we're not that tech savvy, we can learn from it, continue to grow from it. And it's going to be uh, I know, a better future for the Filipino people, I think. You know? So talagang, uh, I truly believe that we are here to uplift la Filipino lives. And through the digital economy, we'll be able to do that. Thank you. Okay. Dick, it, maybe yeah, from it, you? It's also a, a big yes for me. Uh, I think now is, as, is, you know, I wouldn't even say it's as good a time as any. In fact, I think it's a better time than any to go uh, into e-commerce right now. Uh, I think the, the lockdown since March has really prepped up uh, uh, everybody. So... It, it's probably easier to do it now than do it two years ago when the market was not ready. But now that everybody has gotten so used to buying things online, especially since, since the start of the pandemic, uh, the, the barrier to entry, I think, is much lower now than it was. Uh, and as Steve pointed out, uh, uh, you know, for entrepreneurs out there, I think this is, uh, there's a lot of opportunity in this bold new world, this bold new normal uh, that you know, one, two years ago, we wouldn't have really thought about. You know, like things like today, like ed tech, uh, uh, you know, prop tech. Th these things were, were not really a big issue back then. Uh, but now, uh, because of the situation uh, that brought up all of these opportunities, it, it's really a gold mine for entrepreneurs out there. It's just a matter of finding your place, finding the need, uh, and then fulfilling that need uh, effectively. And I think you'll do very well. Oh, well said. And Mr. Victor Paterno, you can hear from you. Yeah. Uh, so whether whether you should quit your job to join the digital economy, uh, right now I wouldn't if you are one of the few who have one. <laughs> I, I think I would continue to up my digital skills and, uh, you know, uh, because your current employer is going to need it. And if he's not going to be around, you're going to need it <laughs> uh, because that's, you know, if, if you were to start something, that's where you would start, definitely. Um, but you know, it's it's a high risk, high return. I think for every uh, Steve and Dick, uh, you will see a hundred others that didn't quite make it. Um, but we'll try again, hopefully. So it, it has its risks. Um, but yes, I think I think uh, everybody would benefit from people in general being more digitally uh, savvy. You know? uh, it's definitely going to be a key skill for um, every company especially after this uh, pandemic. So. so we expect more of a 7-Eleven inspired companies going online. Yeah, we hope to be, uh, you know, play a greater role using our, you know, been using our payments infrastructure uh, to, to enable access. You know? And uh, we want to be able to use our uh, logistics infrastructure, which is uh, considerable. Again, we have trucks that go to the store every day. There's, uh, there's nobody. It's it's almost like a two x, three x lower cost no? if you're willing to pick up at the store. Um, yeah. So that's that's 
yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd like to be able to one day, I should talk to you guys, uh, you know, uh, be able to play a role for like even the Facebook sellers and, and things like that. You know? um, yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd like to be a, we're not, we're not going to compete with the platforms. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's stupid. Um, but, but to be a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a logistics uh, and payments platform in our own right is something we aspire to, to complement our existing business. We're not worried about convenience stores really going away. I think if you were one of the bigger format guys, I, I, I would be worried. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we think this complements uh, our business model rather than uh, you know, threatens it. Since I still have five minutes, just a quick question. Do you think the Philippines is now taking the lead in the Asia, in, the, in terms of digital commerce in Asia and in the Pacific? Are we in, in the, you know, maybe, or are we far behind compared to our other countries, our neighboring countries? Uh, well, personally, I think we're a bit behind. <laughs> uh, well, at least from the payment space, I think we're very behind everything from uh, penetration rate of banking, uh, you know, having access to uh, financial services, credit cards, and so on. We're really way behind. And if you look at QR type of payment, uh, of course, nobody can really compare to China. Uh, but regionally, I think we're still quite behind, which is a good thing because uh, being behind always means that there's more opportunity to grow, right? Yeah. And learn from their mistakes. Take yes, true. Away and I, 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 I think we're, we're furthest behind. And if there's anything that I wish this Singapore FinTech Festival would be able to solve is credit. It's going to get even harder. Right? You, have, you, have, you have the government capping uh, interest yeah. rates, right? At a time when there's no access. So I, I do worry about that part, uh, credit crunch. I mean, for big companies like us, not a problem, right? Uh, there's so much quantitative easing that's come in. It has nowhere to go, but for the small entrepreneurs, that's why we ended up, uh, you know, financing our franchises because we knew they wouldn't be able to get it. Um, mm. But for yeah, that, that, so uh, you know, the, the world's interest rates are dropping. Um, yet, you know, there are people out there who are paying twenty percent a day. Oh yeah, still, especially in the gray market. Yeah. And I'm sure that's growing. Steve, if still you feel the same way, we are quite behind. Uh, yes, uh, as you could see, even for investors, uh, for Southeast Asia, aside from Singapore, they'll go to Indonesia or Vietnam first before the Philippines. The FDI no. of Indonesia is way ahead of ours. Yeah. That's true. The, but the only thing that's nice with the Philippines is we have 100 plus million population no? compared to Thailand or Malaysia that has more than 200. That's why they go to Indonesia first. That's yeah. what I'm mm -mm. But Vietnam, kasi, even though they're smaller than us, their uh, internet infrastructure is really great. Uh, their, uh, let's say their Silicon Valley type uh, uh, for startups is quite uh, robust compared to the Philippines. No? Uh, so we have a lot of catching up to do. But the beauty of it, we can always look at our neighbors and see the future. Parang crystal ball na ito. That can happen to us. No? So yun kagandaan. And that should bring inspiration to all of us. No? Mm -hmm. I think that caps our, our session. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's a such productive session. I met one of the guests. I've learned a lot from all of you. I'm so, so happy. I hope our audience also learned a lot from you. And it's a uh, personal and you guys are just so happy. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnos, Mr. T, and Dick. Thank you very much. And to everybody listening, thank you thank you very much for joining us. And have a good day, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Cheers.